this one's going to be entitled, uh, somebody asked me to, to talk about this, um, manifest your community or create your community. Man, I believe in this one. And, and, I, and I'll tell you, I, I, I grew up as a loner in some ways. Um, I was alone a lot in the woods. I had a lot of alone time. And, and I really appreciate that alone time. And I, and I really think it's important to have it. And I really think it's important that you, you are your own best friend. You're able to entertain, talk to yourself, be with yourself, like yourself. And if you don't like yourself, figure out why and do something about it. That's vital. That's another talk. But what makes that so wonderful is to have a community of people in your life that you know are there. Then when you have that alone time, when you have that, that time where it's just you and nature or just you doing whatever you are doing, you, you have that community always, which makes it so much better. Now, communities can happen. You can be born into a community um, but I want this talk, I want to, you know, entertain the idea of that you can actually create your community. Some of it will happen accidentally just or naturally. And some of it you can actually consciously create. Um, I, I look back I'll, I'll, in my life, I'm 66. When I was in high school, I had a community of friends that I, I long for sometimes. They, it was just those few years, those four years of high school, but I had different levels of it from, and, and I want you to think of this as in your life, what you could do in your life to create this. I had my best friends, my brothers and my sisters who I shared everything with. And then I had different layers of friendships all the way down to sometimes people I only saw once a month or once a year, that was my community. We did things together, we ate together, we hiked together, we went to school together, we studied together. Uh, we talked about life together, about our happiness and our sadness and our fears and our joys and our loves. Um, and then when I went out alone, I could experience nature fully, I could be good with myself, partially because I had that community in my back pocket. Um, so many people today, I think, are, are lonely or they don't have the ability to share their deeper thoughts or ideas because they don't have a community. So consciously creating a community, how do you do that? First of all, by it, by, first of all, by understanding the importance of it and putting the energy out that you want relationships, you want friendships and being willing to take risks like being willing to talk to people, being willing to uh, walk with people, uh, being willing to ask people questions about what they believe or what they think. Um, try to keep your judgments back some, you know? Judgments often create separation. Um, just be more aware. Um, if a relationship seems like it's not good for you, then get rid of it <clears throat> or don't start it. But whether it's your best friend or it's a business relationship or a teacher or a mentor um, or any other level of friendship, all of it makes your community. All of it does. We human beings are social beings. We go back to our ancestors. The only way we survive to this day, and it's remarkable in a completely wild world, was to be in community and to learn to work together and to help each other. Imagine if we did that today, if we build our communities for the higher purpose of helping each other, but also of helping the planet we live on. Because hey, are we not a community upon a community called the planet Earth and all that lives upon her? Yes, we are. And it always comes back to that. We live on the planet Earth it's a community of living beings, trees, plants, insects, animals. Countless beings live on this earth 
It's a community and we are part of it. And of course, we want to have a great close community with other humans because the world that we live in. Um, and that's really equals a better life. And it's okay to have a better life. It really equals a better life <clears throat> to have all of those different relationships, the community. One of the things I learned um, years ago is I came out here to live on this land at Headwaters um, and I built my school. I, I, I built a lot of my students became friends or part of my extended community. Headwaters kind of grew into this like community of people with no real organization around trying to make the community and no, no real, no real like ideas of who or how you fit in. But because we all love nature and we all in a like-minded way went to the school um, and a lot of, a lot of the people were young and they've grown into their adulthood and are living their lives and have children now, <clears throat> the headwaters became this incredible community of people. And I'm just blown away by it now. Um, how many people are in our lives? Um, a few years back when I turned 60, uh, Julie, you know, who helps run the school and so forth, um, and cooks for us and everything else, that we, she makes it all happen. Uh, she, to my surprise, let everybody know that I was turning 60 and that I've been in this school going back for 20 years or more, 30 years. Some, in some cases, uh, that I was turning 60 and if they wanted to, they could write me a note or send me an email or send me a letter. I got 250 letters from people telling me how I'd helped them in their life slash this school had helped them in their life. And they are all a part of my community. And, and, and I've learned um, that if I got into trouble up here, like let's say we had a fire or something, if I put the word out, I bet you I'd have 200 people here in a matter of a few days helping out. And I feel the same. If someone called me, I'd be there to help them. And that, so the community, you, you know, we do this crazy thing in this world. We call it, we buy insurance to protect ourselves. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but the greatest insurance you can ever have is a community. The love of a community, the respect of a community, the, the willingness to be of service from a community. <clears throat> but just to sum up, you can create your community. You have to be a part of it. You have to meet people. You have to bring them in without really ever saying that it, what it is. It's just, you have to develop relationships. You have to put yourself out there. That's part of the joy of it. Um, and then you wake up every day and you go, wow, like I feel pretty good. There's a lot of love in my life. There's a lot of people who care about me and I care about them. And that's a thing of beauty. And then often today, particularly, we can take that power of that community and, and put it into working for our planet to make it healthier or to build our relationship close. And the last thing I want to say is have gatherings with your community and do it in nature. Go out on walks and hikes. Nature is, to me, one of the great gifts that holds community and brings it together. When we, when we go out into nature, uh, it really helps strengthen our communities um, and give us purpose, a higher purpose. And in fact, that's often what a community needs is a purpose, but there's nothing wrong with it just being good quality friendships from your best friend to the one you just met, to everything in between. Hope. Oh.